All right, guys, here is a knife that I own that I have gotten a lot of questions about. Uh, I did an unboxing, got a few questions. I've posted on Instagram quite a bit lately um, and Facebook, and I get a lot of questions about this one because it's not widely known. So this is a Shark Nivco Ryu. Okay, it's a full-size Ryu. It is different than the pocket Ryu that I have one of that are being made by um, being offered by Honest EDC and we can talk about that more towards the end <laughs> these have been yeah it's been a long time coming and maybe one day these will be released I don't know so but we'll talk about that but this and I think a lot of people don't know about it because they're very hard to get you're only going to be able to get them on the secondary market. Now, I'm not going to say only, but I, I've met Edison um, Barajas, who is the owner of Shark Nivco. Um, great guy. Hung out with him at the California Custom Knife Show a couple of times now. Um, we ended up all going out to dinner with a big group of us. We hung out for quite a while and, and just hung out and it was great. Him and his brother, Victor, who has his own knife company, VI Knives. Um, and they both make awesome stuff. They work in the same the same shop in Florida. I don't remember exactly where, sorry. Um, but they work in the same shop together, but have their own separate designs and separate, you know, companies. But they mostly make them for shows. And usually when you go to the show, it's a lottery also. So they're very hard to get. Now, I got this on the secondary market. And let's just zoom in and take a close look. And then we will get into some of the specs and whatnot just because it's what I do. But I got this on the secondary market. I'm probably the third or fourth owner, maybe fifth. We're not sure. But I had posted it, and one of the previous owners reached out to me and said, hey, that's my old knife. Or he had posted, hey, that's my old knife. Um, maybe it was on, on um, ah, it was on my YouTube channel. It, well, the, it was on YouTube here. On my five most carried knives, he had made a comment of, hey, that's my old knife. And I said, hey, can you tell me any information, right? So he reached out to me, and we spoke. And what I did not know is that this is not the factory finish on the scales. It is the factory finish on the blade, but that particular owner, who was the second or third owner maybe, he had some lock stick and he didn't like the finish and I totally space on what the finish was. So he sent it off to somebody who did a scotch bright belt to put this finish on it, this belt rubbed finish um, on the show side, the lock side, the clip, everything, and did a fantastic job. Okay, there are some little scratches here and there, no question from being in people's pockets and being carried and being used. And that's totally okay. No branding at all on the knife, period, which is awesome. That's my preferred thing. But just beautiful knife overall. And yeah, there's some scratches. Some of which I probably put there. I'm not going to lie. Maybe there was some when I got it. I don't know. I don't even care. But super awesome. So let's dive into the specs. Okay, and there is going to be, if you're going to the California Custom Knife Show, that's in a couple of weeks, middle of October in Southern California in Anaheim. If you're going, Eddie will be there. And I've seen some kind of preview pictures of the Ryu that he is bringing. I don't know what it is exactly because it was all torn apart. And so it had all the pieces upside down. So you couldn't see the finished side. You could see the inside of the scale. So if you're going to be there, please go check him out. 
take a quick peek at his uh, offerings because he does amazing work. It's all hand done. This is not CNC machined out. He cuts it out. He does all of that in-house in Florida, in his shop by hand, and the tolerances are amazing. So clothes length is five inches. Overall is eight and a half. The blade length is 3.45 inches. And the edge, I took two measurements, right? So if you measure the edge from the choil to the tip, you're at 3.23. But you really get with a tanto like this, and I don't know that I've ever really measured them this way, is you have this dimension as a cutting edge, and then you have this dimension as a cutting edge. So it actually is longer than the 3.23. It's 3.73 if you do this edge and then this edge. So there, there you go. The blade steel on this one, I got no idea. Sometimes when you're buying custom knives, you just don't care. And I didn't care because I'm not a steel snob anyway. So I just don't care. Okay, the blade thickness is 0.169. Overall thickness is 0 0.510, weighs in at 5.8 ounces, and it does run on bearings. Again, as I've said many times, just because it's on bearings does not mean it's going to drop shut. And yes, I could probably tune it and play with it some, but I have no desire. Now, those of you that have a Ryu or have felt a Ryu, maybe you can help me explain the action. The flip is unlike any knife I have ever felt. It's just, it's hard to explain. I, I, it's solid, but effortless. It's almost, I don't know. It, it, I can't explain it. I, I'm going to talk to the previous owner. He actually told me at one point his thoughts on it. And I totally didn't write it down. I'll have to go scrolling through my messages. So I'll put that in a comment because it's just a weird feel. It, it, it's not weird. It's just unusual and something that I have never felt on any other knife, period. Production, custom, mid-tech. Never felt it before. And it's just amazing. And I love it. So there is a thing... Now, the previous owner that had the uh, finish done also had some lock stick issues, which he had corrected, and it's perfect. There's not a, a hint of stick, nothing. The action is perfect, and it's just, it feels great. Now, one thing about it that makes me nervous, and we're going to test this theory here in just a minute, is there's a lot of blade here. And you can see, maybe, there's the edge of the blade. As I close the knife, I can feel the edge of the blade, I think, on my finger. Right? Right here on my middle finger. Right in here, I can feel it. So it's always made me nervous. And knives that don't have backspacers and that are a little bit thicker, I have cut my finger open once really bad with the knife in my pocket. So this always makes me a little nervous, right? And when I can feel the blade and, and I don't want to just push down and go across because if it's going to cut me, it's going to cut me. I don't feel like doing that on TV. <laughs> so <laughs> I did bring out an imitation finger so that we can see if this is going to cut my finger or not. Okay, this is your standard Oscar Mayer all beef Frank hot dog. Um, and let's see if it cuts just by dragging it across. No, nope. and if I give it some pressure. Again, it's not cut. So I think I'm pretty safe in handling this. And I know this is kind of weird, but you guys know what I mean. When there is 
Now there, I think I did cut because I put it in kind of this way, right? As you have big knives like that, like here is the Reese Whelan Fatty Slash. I, I don't know if it's going to cut either, but it's much bigger. And no, it's not going to cut either. Okay, it has a little bit of a line there, but that's from the edges of the scale. So it's not an issue. It's something that I thought might be an issue because I can feel it. And I'm just going to wipe this off really quickly for just a moment. And if we look at the blade itself, yeah, there's nothing there. So I don't know. I just, with knives that have no backspacer and they're just open construction like this, and they try to fit a lot of knife blade into the handle, it's just concerning. Now, I did cut myself open on, and we're going to have some smudgy stuff there from the from the dog, but hey, that's okay. Um, I'll be honest, and I'll, I'll tell you here, it was the Medford um, Fat Daddy. I had a blacked out Fat Daddy, and Greg notoriously puts as much blade into the knife as you can fit to the point where on the Fat Daddy... It was right here on the edge and I slipped my finger open hardcore. And on a lot of Greg's knives, the tip is poking out the back of the knife. Um, and I've cut myself that way also. But I've also done that with big knives with a Bugatti. So that happens, okay? So let's talk about size comparisons a little bit. Here you go with the Sharpie. The Spyderco Delica, the D battery, and the D and the double A. Since we had it out, the bun length hot dog that I don't want to sit down on my mat because it'll get kind of juicy and gross, but it gives you the idea. Wipe my finger off over here. And then the Pocket Ryu. Okay, this is a production version made offshore that at some point may be in production and available. Reach out to Joe Cucurella. He's the guy who's got them from Honest EDC. And uh, yeah, at some point these will be ready to launch, but these came out amazing also. And when it gets closer to launch time of these, we'll do a full video. I have the full packaging. I did an unboxing quite a while back. Um, which I'll link to down below, just so you can get a little taste of what is to come with the Pocket Ryu to kind of bring the Ryu feel, look, and whatnot in a little bit smaller package, much more affordable package, and much more available once they are ready to launch. So very cool idea and plan, and these work awesome. So there you go, guys, the Shark Nivco, Nivco Ryu from Eddie Barajas. Thank you, Eddie. And I can't wait to see you down at California Custom Knife Show again this year. I will not be bringing this with me because I'm just flying down in the morning and flying back in the afternoon. So I'm not going to check a bag and take any knives with me that time. Um, however, if, if I know somebody that's going to go, I may ship it down there so that I can have it at the show because that would be cool. So we'll see. There you go, guys. Thanks a lot for watching.